Spray Tips with Tom Wolf is brought to you by Loveland Products and All Clear, the premium spray tank cleaner. Don't let spray tank residue lose you. Know. The results are all clear. Hello and welcome to Spray Tips with Tom. I'm Tom Wolf. I'm an application specialist with Agrimetrics. Uh, a common question I get at this time of year is uh, the use of aircraft in, in agricultural spraying, aircraft versus ground. Should I be calling the airplane when I need to spray my fungicide, for example, or my pre-harvest situation? Uh, some guys have excellent looking crops and don't want to trample them with wheel tracks. It's a very important question. Uh, the short answer is that ag uh, agricultural aircraft have a very important and useful role to play. In, uh, in spraying our, our crop protection agents. Um, and, uh, and I guess the, the main point of confusion is, uh, do aircraft, do, uh, some, do they have some kind of a, a, a almost miraculous approach to spraying that allows them to use so, so little water? And the answer is actually no. Um, aircraft have the, the same limitations uh, in coverage as conventional ground sprayers do. In other words, coverage is really the product of water volume and droplet size. If you want more coverage, in other words, more pro a greater proportion of the total surface area covered by spray droplets, you either have to increase water volume or you have to decrease your droplet size. Um, the beauty of decreasing droplet size is it yields a great number more droplets. If you uh, cut the droplet size in half, for example, you get eight times the number of droplets. So it's a very, very efficient way of increasing coverage. The real downside of it is twofold. We increase our risk of drift and we increase our risk of rapid evaporation of those droplets. The little tiny guys evaporate so quickly, particularly under uh, dry and warm conditions, atmospheric conditions, that uh, they may actually become drift prone in flight from the aircraft or they might uh, evaporate so quickly on the leaf surface that there's not enough time for them to be properly taken up. Um, Aerial applicators uh, know the limitations of, uh, of, this, of this coverage question that they, that they face. Uh, the practical constraint that aerial guys have is that they have smaller tanks and therefore they, and maybe they have to ferry 30, 40 kilometers to their runway to fill back up. So they have a productivity loss by going to high water volumes. And that's a, that's a very legitimate concern. Um, so the, the main thing that I would say is it's still important to make sure you have sufficient droplet numbers per square centimeter square inch of leaf surface. So that's a function really of the kind of canopy that you have. If you have a canopy that's very dense and deep, you will need more water or smaller droplets to get that coverage on, regardless of the application method. And if you have a fairly shallow canopy, like an early season, more of a herbicide spray, uh, you can probably get away with a little bit less water because you have less attenuation in that canopy from the spray. Um, the, 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 some of the, uh, I guess, myths in agricultural spraying uh, are that the aircraft wing uh, creates a downforce that pushes the spray into the canopy. This is partly true. The aircraft wing does generate a downforce, and you can feel it when the aircraft flies over, overhead. That's how the aircraft stays aloft. It pushes air down uh, and, and so on, and, and so to counteract its own weight. Um, however, uh, the droplets that are emitted by the spray boom under an aircraft uh, are not, you know, the aircraft flies about 10 to 15 feet above ground nowadays. And by the time the droplets are ready to hit the canopy, the, the downforce has dissipated. And so the, the majority of the droplets in from an aircraft deposit uh, by gravity and by wind, uh, possibly three seconds or four seconds after the aircraft has made its pass. It takes some time. By that time, that downforce is completely dissipated. Uh, another challenge that aircraft have is just uh, the uniformity of deposition. Uh, we go to the calibration clinics. I'm trained, for example, in, in, in helping applicators uh, set up their sprayers, their, their aerial sprayers, so that they, they can get the best possible pattern. It's very challenging to do this. There's all kinds of aerodynamic forces that come into play, uh, the propeller, the, 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 the fuselage itself, the, the, the landing gear, the boom and boom structures, all play a role in, in where the spray 
is deposited. And you can get very dramatic uh, dips and, and, and you know, hills and valleys, basically, in the overall deposition. Um, the, the, the lower the water volume is, sometimes the more acute that can become. And you can have uh, you know, a bit of striping from an aerial application if you're not careful. So uh, my best advice is to have a conversation with an aerial applicator um, uh, to uh, look at the label, uh, look at the canopy, make sure that you have sufficient water to, uh, to, to cover the canopy. Make sure that you're in line with the label uh, recommendations as well. Most fungicide labels, for example, do call for four, five, and sometimes more U.S. gallons per acre. Uh, in Saskatchewan and in much of the prairies, we're probably sometimes doing only half that. So I think it's worthwhile having that discussion uh, with the aerial applicator and seeing, well, what would it cost, for example, to come to a higher water volume? Um, what about drift risk? Uh, is this product, does it have buffer zones? Is there a concern about going to the low water volumes with, uh, with the, the smaller droplets, for example? Have an inform, make an informed decision about that. Uh, I would always like to gravitate towards more water and slightly coarser sprays, even from aircraft, just to mitigate some of those risks because the, the public and the regulators are concerned about drift from aircraft. That is a legitimate concern. So. Um, Having said all that, I would not hesitate to call the aircraft when a spray job needs to happen. Uh, their key advantages are timeliness. They can get the job done very quickly, and I think that is key uh, when you're dealing with crop protection. And the, uh, the other one is the lack of wheel tracks. With a beautiful canopy, uh, you may not want to drive uh, through, that, through that field with your, with your, your big uh, unit and create tracks, or maybe it's wet. There's all kinds of very, very good reasons to call the aircraft. Don't hesitate to do it. Uh, have that discussion about water volume, as I mentioned, and make an informed decision and then cough up a few extra dollars for uh, maybe a little bit more water to be sure that you've, you've got all those bases covered. Hope that answers your questions today. Uh, my name is Tom Wolf and this was Spray Tips with Tom.